I've been to France. It's, you know, it's moderately sunny, but it's definitely far from being the sunniest place on the earth. And yet, they just made a new rule there. And frankly, this proves that solar, my friends, it's coming in a big way. In fact, I think this new rule will probably be adopted by many countries around the world within the next few years. That means big changes, more energy, and more than likely, a new phenomenon called the marginal cost of energy, which Tony Sieber has talked about many times. What does this mean? Eventually, electricity will be virtually free. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. Great to see you. If you're new to the channel, my name's Sam Evans. I'm coming to you from Melbourne in Australia. And I've made a fair few videos of the past year and a half talking about how the cost of energy will come down. Now, yes, it's high right now, but many experts have predicted that energy costs will be virtually zero by 2050. The reason? Renewable energy will provide us with superpower, more energy than we need. Now, when we do what's doing, being done in France, when that starts to be commonplace all around the world, you can see how we'll have an overabundance of energy, particularly at certain times of the day. Now, energy won't be virtually free at certain times ever, I don't believe. But at some times, like say, for example, at two o'clock in the middle of the day, when there's an insane amount of sun in many countries around the world, that's when there's going to be way more energy than we could possibly know what to do with. And so that gets my creative juices thinking. And I think, imagine what people could do when they have an overabundance of energy, when they have free energy. Imagine what we could produce. Imagine what we could create. In France, all large parking lots now have to be covered entirely by solar panels. This new legislation was actually approved through the French Senate this week and requires all parking lots with spaces of at least 80 vehicles, both existing already and new, to be covered by solar panels. The new provisions are part of the French President Emmanuel Macron's large-scale plan to heavily invest in renewables, which aims to multiply by 10 the amount of solar energy produced in the country and to double the power from land-based wind farms. Now, a lot of people, uh, they think that these kind of new reforms, these new ideas, they are just greenwashing or that they're being done to appease certain demographics, certain parts of the population who are more emotional about you know, having clean energy or about saving the planet. The truth is actually it's, yeah, that might have something to do with it, but primarily, fundamentally, it comes down to cost. The cost long-term and short-term of renewable energy, the savings we can make by using renewable energy are literally in the trillions and trillions of dollars. Now, many of you still say nuclear this, or you say coal this, or we need gas for this. And the reality is that information you're basing those assumptions on, it's old information. It's completely incorrect. Now, I used to talk that way as well. Before I started this channel, I used to think that way. I used to think nuclear was fantastic. The more you research this, the more you look at the current today's prices of battery technology of solar and wind, and then you look at the constantly falling costs of those technologies, you start to realize, actually, yes, Oxford are correct. All these academics and these economists are correct. We will save trillions of dollars if we move to renewable energy. And the faster we do it, the more money we save. So I don't believe the French president is doing this simply to earn brownie points with people who feel like we should do it for emotional reasons or for, for saving the world or for you know reducing global warming. I don't think that's the key reason. That might be part of it, but I don't think that's what's driving this adoption of renewables all around the world. Starting on the 1st of July, 2023, Smaller car parks that have between 80 and 400 spaces will have five years to be in compliance with the new measures. Car parks with more than 400 spaces have a shorter timeline. They will need to comply with the new measures within three years. And at least half of the surface area of the parking lot must be covered in solar panels. Now, the great thing is solar panels, their energy efficiency is getting better and better. Costs are coming down. Sometimes they go up a little bit, but in general, costs continue to go down. And I just read an article showing that more than likely within the next couple of years, solar panel efficiency will increase to around 27 to 28%, which is insane when you have a look at where we were at only 10 years ago. According to the government, this plan 
targets large parking areas around commercial centers and train stations and could generate 11 gigawatts of energy, which is the equivalent of 10 nuclear reactors powering many, many millions of homes. Public Senate writes that stipulations were put into place excluding parking lots for trucks carrying heavy goods or parking areas in historic or protected areas to avoid distorting them according to an amendment to the bill. So basically people in historic areas complained. They said, this is going to ruin the look of our town. We don't want to do this. And they gave in, capitulated to those people. Other measures on the table, according to Electric, include large solar farms on vacant land found outside highways and railways, as well as on agricultural lands where feasible. Macron has said that any bill passed would need to guarantee money that ensures local communities directly benefit from the energy shift. That's already what's happening in many places around the world. Local communities are essentially generating money from having these mini power stations. For example, like regional communities have gone, "Um, well, Why don't we just cover all this area we're not using with solar panels? We can generate electricity for ourselves, which will mean we'll save money. We can sell that electricity when we have more than we need to other people living in more dense cities. It's a really good way for smaller communities to make money. France's National Rail Service, SNCF, plans to install 190,000 square meters of solar panels in 156 stations throughout the country by 2025 and 1.1 million square meters by 2030, all with the aim to reduce energy consumption by 25%. The government plans to build 50 additional wind farms like the one offshore Saint-Nazaire by 2050 in France. Measures are in place to reduce delays in building offshore wind farms, which we should be adopting here in Australia, from 10 to 12 years down to six years and large solar farms from six years to three years. Well done, France. Reducing regulation is extremely important to making this transition happen faster. Now, speaking of that offshore wind farm that I just mentioned, that wind farm has 80 offshore wind turbines off the west coast of France, and it's just been completed. It's France's first offshore wind farm, and it'll be up and running by the end of this year. It's got enough power for 700,000 people. This summer, the French government solidified two zones for offshore wind farms off the coast of the Atlantic following a massive public debate involving 15,000 participants with environmental protection being the biggest concern. It's, It's sort of strange, isn't it? How environmental protection seems to actually stop. I mean, people who feel that we shouldn't have wind farms can often delay these projects when they're the ones who I would have thought would be most in favor of supporting clean energy. So it's surprising to me when I hear this sort of stuff. The first wind farm is planned to be sited off the island of Oleron, more than 35 kilometers off the coast of La Rochelle with a capacity of around 1000 megawatts. The second wind farm will be likely located farther out at sea with both wind farms together producing enough electricity for 1.6 million people. Now, I predicted when I first started this channel, I was very optimistic that the most of the world, at least the Western world, would move to completely renewable energy by 2030. Now, uh, I'm going to change that timeline. I'm going to go with 2035. I'm convinced it'll happen purely for economic reasons, not for saving the world, not for reducing global warming. That's important, but that's not the fundamental reason it'll happen. The reason will be simply cost. Renewable energy is the cheapest form of energy. Many people find that hard to believe. They have their own dug-in beliefs and trying to argue with them is really pointless and meaningless. But realistically, at some point over the next few years, pretty much everyone will have to accept the fact that solar, wind and batteries are the future of the planet. And so is very, very cheap electricity. Now remember, that very cheap electricity will eventually power hundreds of millions of electric cars. Thanks for watching. Let me know your thoughts in the comments section below. Do you disagree? Do you agree? What do you think? As always, my friends, have a great day. Stay positive, and I'll see you again on the next video. Bye-bye.